at this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Kimberly Brown, who is going to be giving our five-minute reflection, as well as our group prayer. We just ask at this time that, that everyone put their phones on mute to just avoid any outside distraction. Ms. Brown, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharita. This is very, very exciting that this is our last GCS um, for this year. And um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to, to finish out the year like this, having having seen the Lord <laughs> put the pieces together for GCS. And, you know, here we are at the end of 2011, um, with a prayer line, <laughs> something that we never even thought that we were going to have. So, you know, I just wanted to start by giving thanks to God for all that he has done with NGCF, um, for the connections and for the people that he has joined together and for the ministries that have come together, for the friendships that have happened, for um, just the uh, strengthening and the edification and the the uh, koinonia, the fellowship that we have one for another. It's it's a beautiful thing. As the Bible says, and when the Lord sees unity or that type of fellowship, that there's a commanded blessing. Um, so I just wanted to thank God for that. Tonight we're going to be um, we're going to be talking about the dance minister, <clears throat> and we're going to be on this topic for two weeks. It's still within the sacred dance um, theme um, or the, the sacred dance series. This is just a subtitle. And um, I'll be your prayer lead uh, tonight as well as the first Monday in January, um, after which um, other um, prayer leads will, will take on. But for the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about the dance minister and um, just continuing our thought on sacred dance, I probably will only be five minutes, if that, um, because I think we need to spend some time in, in, in prayer today, really um, seeking after the heart of God, really uh, chasing after him. But um, as the Lord was preparing me for what to say tonight, I could see um, why he started us off with sacred dance, especially towards the end of the year. So we can, you know, we regain a greater understanding that um, that our dance is not ours, that our gift is not ours, that it, it's from God to be used the way he wants it, when he wants it, um, so that we can really start to see ourselves as the temple of the Holy Spirit as well as an instrument, um, just like if someone were to pick up a flute, they're going to pick the flute up when they want. They're going to play it the way they want to play it. And they're going to play it to whatever songs that they want. When we yield ourselves unto God, when we yield our, our bodies as, you know, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service, when we really submit our gift and commit our way to him, we become an instrument and we become totally submissive to how he chooses to pick us up, when he chooses to play us, and what type of songs that he chooses. So as we continue on talking about sacred dance and, and indirectly, directly, the dance minister, we have to really get that understanding that as a minister of dance, we have to know that there is a higher responsibility when we call ourselves that. There's a higher level of dedication. There's a higher level of submissiveness. There's a higher level of consecration. There's also a, a greater manifestation of the glory of God, of the presence of God, of the move of God, of the anointing that will come upon us as we submit ourselves and our gift unto him, really, really seeing ourselves as an instrument. Nothing more and nothing less. Because if he doesn't pick us up, if that person doesn't pick the flute up, the flute stays in its case. And a lot of times we try to get out of the case or, you know what I mean, we try to be, be used in our own way. We want to choose the songs. We want to do this. We want to do But when we really, really yield ourselves, 
we become an instrument. We become a vessel that the Holy Spirit can freely move in. Just like someone blowing the pipe, they have to blow like the Holy Spirit when he breathes pneuma, new life into us. When we receive a refreshing from him, that's like him blowing fresh wind into our spirit, man. And what it does, it, it does, you know, in the flute. The flute then begins to play, but it needs that breath. It needs that unction. It needs some type of force, some type of power behind it to be able to, to create a sound. And for the dancer, we need the unction of the Holy Spirit. We need him to be able to move freely in us. We need to be submitted to his way, to his purposes, our gift needs to be sacred. So I can see, you know, how, why the Lord wanted us to really gain that understanding. And I'm, I'm actually almost finished because we really, really need to understand that, you know, our gift is sacred. And as a dance minister, that is our top priority. And what the Lord does at times is, He'll put us through purification. He'll, pure, he pu- he'll put us in seasons of fire. And I know that a lot of us have come out of that. And I believe that this message is not for everybody. This message isn't even for the entire, it is for the blanket body of Christ, but it's not for everyone because there are some that the Lord had to try this year. There are some that the Lord had to purify with fire to bring us out as pure gold so that we can be used at a greater level because there's a greater platform that's coming to some of us. There's a greater level of anointing that the Lord has for some of us. There's a greater manifestation of the presence of God that's going to be um, noticeable in our ministries, but just for some of us. It's the ones that have been tried, the ones that have been broken, the ones that allowed the Lord to carry them through those seasons of sometimes humiliation and frustration. Those are the ones in this season and or this this season that the Lord has purified and tried because the next season is going to be a greater platform, a greater level of anointing, greater manifestations. And I, I really want us all to really start to be expecting God. And what was on my heart to to share tonight was that, but it was really for us to cry out to God. God is looking for dance ministers that will stand in a place. There's a place that as a servant of God, anyone that ministers to, to, to God and his people stands in a particular place. Some of us don't understand the place that we really stand in. The Bible says we're seated in heavenly places. We're far above principalities. But, but for some of us, that's not a reality yet. But there is a place that we as dance ministers stand in that we can petition God, that we can cry out for God, that we can ask him for his heart, ask him to really, really transform this dance into, into, into whatever the people need. Transform these movements so that his glory begins to rain down. Transform it. Transform what the people see so that they don't see us anymore. All they see is the glory of God. And the reason why it's not happening is because we're not asking for it enough. We're not going after God. We're not asking. The Lord desires it, but we don't ask enough, nor do we position ourselves in a place to receive it. So in closing, as we just, we we have one more conversation to talk about the dance minister, and then we're going into the throne room together on January the 7th to meet God. But really, really start to perceive the place that you're in. Perceive the season that you're in. Perceive what God is trying to do in you and in your ministry, because the next season is going to be a greater platforms, greater level of manifestation, because that's how the Lord will confirm it for you. He will confirm it because you'll see a greater level of manifestation that will come out of your ministry. It will be something that you've never experienced or never seen before, something that you've never experienced. And that should be evident 
that should follow the dance minister. That should, that, those type of manifestations follow anyone that lingers and that stays in the presence of God long enough to be smeared with his anointing. So in closing, and as we continue, we're, we're going to talk about more next week that the dance minister has to stay, has to stay in that place so that they can be smeared so that when they walk out and when they stand before God and his people, people can sense the presence of God. Amen.